All right, what's happening? Well, here it is, the grand finale of the 2004 Chevy Tahoe 100,000 mile service. And last but not least, the transmission service. Now, the transmission service can be interpreted a couple different ways depending on, you know, who you ask. Uh, some people will say it's just replacing the filter and putting five quarts in it. Some people will say just do the flush. Well, fuck that. We're doing it my way. So for the transmission service that we're doing today, we're going to replace all the fluid in it. It's like 15 quarts or something. And then we're also going to do the transmission filter itself. Now, I also have to do something else with this Tahoe. I guess you can come take a look. I don't know how well you can see this. This is the lower transmission cooler line that runs from the transmission directly up to the radiator. You can see where that fancy fitting is right there where it turns from a hard metal line to a rubber line. That thing's seeping. So since I'm here doing all this transmission shit, I'm going to replace that line too, but that's not going to be included in this video. So I'm going to lay out a brief summary of how this is all going to go down. Just put it up here up front so you know what you're actually tuning in for so there's no surprises. So the way we're going to do it, first I'm going to go ahead and replace that cooler line. That's not a big deal. Then we're going to set up for pumping out trans fluid. We're going to do one run of pumping. Then we're going to change the filter. And then we're going to do the second run, the third run, and maybe even a fourth run depending on how long it takes to get all this nasty fluid out of here. One thing I want to note here before we start, the transmission on this Tahoe has a drain plug, but I'm not even going to fuck with that. You know what I mean? Because GM's weird like that where some transmissions had it, some didn't. Let's just assume that you don't have this plug. I, th I think that's a more fair way of doing it. Got my line swapped out. We're ready to start doing this flush. Now they sell these GM cooler fittings. I think Summit Racing has them. It's just a little plug you can push in and then put a you know, 3 8 rubber hose on here and clamp it down and that's going to give you your connection into the radiator but I kind of got a different idea of what I want to do a little bit a little bit different see I just pulled this out of the truck and it gives me a fitting on each end I really only need one what I'm going to do is disconnect the upper cooler line at the rad and plug this in instead and the idea here is to stretch it all the way across the, the front of the truck put a little rubber hose on it and have it go into a bucket and that way I can monitor it right here from the driver's door so let's get ready to hook up our pump apparatus thingy one thing I'm gonna tell you right from the start these little clips are assholes talked about this before I keep spares now I went and bought like a 10 pack on Amazon so what I've got is just a little curled pick and I don't know if you can see it from there, but there's a little hump down here. And that hump is like the middle of the clip. So the hump of the clip is right here. So since I know the hump is up here, then I know the split's down here somewhere. So can you see how I got the side of the clip up? Just kind of work my pick like that. Now you're not going to be able to actually see me do this. There she be. So now I can go ahead and just wiggle this line out of here. Now at this point, this is where I could just shove this little uh, adapter fitting up in there, put the clip back in, and then run a rubber hose across the front of the truck. But what I want to do instead, like I said, is just use that cooler line I just removed. Got my clip back in there. I mean, that reaches clear across the engine bay. So I'm going to put a little 3 8 hose on the end of that thing. Now, I don't want this hose to pop out of this bucket. So I'm just going to take a old throwout bearing and just kind of zip tie it to the hose. Kind of like act like an anchor, I guess. So I've never done this before, but we're going to give it a try. What should happen is I should start it up. Fluid should start coming out of this hose right here, and I'm going to let it run until like I hear like any kind of a gurgle or anything like that. So let's give it a try.
Oh, we got a leak. Shit. Shit. Plan. I want to have better numbers for you guys. Unlike the last one, I didn't really have nothing to measure the fluid with that came out, but this time I do. Give you guys a better look at the nasty that came out. I can't measure what came out on the floor, but we're right at about one, two, three, three and a half quarts. So if we got half a quart on the floor, uh, we're right on par with about four quarts coming out. I also made a little fine tuning to this uh, adapter right here that leaked its ass off. But what we're going to do is leave the apparatus hooked up. Now we're going to drop the transmission pan and change the filter. Here's our transmission pan. Now I went through the service information and it wants you to remove the catalytic converter. And we're not going to do that. But... I think what we do have to do is to get that shift bracket out of the way. Now the problem with that is, is I can't even see the fucking bolts that hold that thing down. So there's no way I'm going to be able to show it on film. So the best I can do is just try to explain what I'm doing, I guess. There's like no fucking room up there. But what I've got is I can feel up top on that bracket, I feel a hex head bolt. And then about four inches behind it, I feel a Torx head bolt. Since when does GM use a 12 millimeter on anything? Get out of here first motherfucking try. It is a T40 Torx. I know this is probably like the worst fucking camera angle in history. And I apologize. But at no point was I able to actually see what I was doing. Ah, yeah, Ku coach with the left hand, motherfucker, what? Oh. There she be. Now, according to the book, it says you don't have to remove the lever from the linkage arm. But the book also said you had to pull off the catalytic converter, so I don't even know who to trust. It would almost make more sense just to pop that turd off and at least you know get it out of the way I think that's what I'm gonna do there. so this should give you a better idea of how far those bolts are spaced apart I wish I could have showed you a better view of this but I think the only way to do that would be to, to, to pull the transmission out you know what I mean so now with him out of the way, let's go ahead and loosen up these pan bolts. And the way I do it, I take them all out, except for the four corners. Just my personal preference. So with all them turds out, I'm gonna go ahead I'm going to crack these front ones loose. Okay, so we're loose all the way around. I've just got a little like putty scraper, I guess, and a hammer. What I'm trying to do is just break this seal. that 
Another thing to note is, since we pumped out that fluid at first, this pan's not going to be super, super full. So let's just go ahead and pop this filter off. Now, just like in my buddy's envoy, I'm, I'm not I'm not fucking with this seal. Just take some of that nasty fluid, rub it around that shaft. Cool. Now this filter does look a little bit different than the one that came off of it. Although it looks a little bit different than what I took out, the dimensions are pretty much the same, so I'm okay with that. You gotta make sure to get all this crap off of the transmission right here where the gasket meets up. I actually bought a scraper just for doing these uh, transmission pans. Because the head of it's narrow enough it can get you know in the tight spaces like right there so I'm gonna go ahead and clean that off because you're not really missing much I'm just going over with the scraper a hundred times and then we'll clean up the pan here's the transmission pan right here it's got this shitty uh, gasket that just breaks apart in pieces we can take our, our scraper and just kind of go around it a billion times as you can tell, this is a pretty fucking time consuming process. So I'm not going to show you all this because I don't even want to watch me do it again when I edit this. So we'll be back. I didn't record this part because it was super boring, but pretty much a can of brake clean, a rag and a garden hose. And I really just scrubbed the hell out of that pan. It was really hard to get it 100% perfect to get all that shit off of there. But I think I got the, at least the actual mating surface is good enough. It should be good to go. So here's a better look at the pan. You can tell I didn't, I wasn't 100% perfect getting all this stuff off of here. Now this is a little bit different than when I did the filter on my buddy's envoy. Because in this case, I don't really have to do much um, finagling with the pan, you know, to get it back up in there. I have a pretty good view as to what's going on. So while I could very well take some of this um, weather strip adhesive and just kind of tacky them down into place uh, I don't really have to do that you know that's more for if I was crawling on the ground and I've got to wiggle the pan around and I don't want the gasket to slip out you know if it's a tight area and you can't really see shit that good but I think we're going to be good without it in this case now another tip that was brought up you could run a couple bolts through it and that will kind of hold it in place you know what I'm saying So I'm just going to go around and get them all started. Now the way GM describes tightening these bolts down is to do it alternately and evenly and tighten to 97 inch pounds. Alternately, which is basically skipping a bolt, doing the next one. Doing the next one. See what I'm saying? And then, although GM didn't say to do this, fuck them. I'm just gonna go around and I'm gonna do one pass just to make sure I got them all. You might call it OCD, I guess. But it's just another deal where there's a lot of bolts. It's easy to get 
you know, sidetracked um, as to like what bolt you're on or whatever. Didn't really have much on it, just a little quarter inch drive, 13 millimeter socket. And we'll go ahead and get this whippersnapper back up on here. Couldn't really feel it, this thing seated down all the way. Now I'm not going to show you putting those invisible bolts back in for that shifter bracket, but believe me, I'm going to put them back in. Uh, one other thing that I want to show you guys, because I kind of fucked up, uh, to get that cooler line off, I took this shield off. This is on the passenger side of the vehicle. There is one and two 10 millimeter bolts that hold that little heat shield on there. I guess its purpose is just to protect the transmission from heat, you know, from the catalytic converter right here. At no point did the service information say that that has to come off, but I will say, it did make it kind of a little bit easier, I guess, getting up here and cleaning all the gunk off, you know, where the pin meets to the transmission. So just something to keep in mind, but pretty cool. Got my bracket back on. I'm just gonna get some brake clean. Just kind of clean this shit off a little bit. All right. So the pan's back on, everything's cool. I'm gonna go ahead and put five quarts back into this thing. And the reason I'm doing five, because I think we got five out of it. We got three and a half into the bucket. We got about a half a quart on the floor. And uh, when we took the pan out, we, we got a little bit more fluid out of it. So, like I said, I'm just gonna put five in. I'm just gonna leave the funnel like that. It should be all right, no big deal. But I wanna show you something else that I did. I came back here. I came back and you can see this mark right here. I marked where four quarts was in this bucket. And now with the flashlight behind it, when I'm standing there with the truck running, I can see when I'm pretty close to four quarts. That should be good. All right. All right, so I dumped another four quarts in the trans. We're just gonna do it again. Can't see me, I'm all the way over here, but all I'm doing is putting four more quarts back in. Let's do her again. Now you pack her head. Oh yeah, look at that. That looks just as good as the stuff I'm pouring right in there. So, I'm just gonna put four back in. Sounds like you're taking a piss. 
talk to the machine. Once again, I got to carefully um, get that uh, clip out. Go ahead and slide our original cooler line on here. Carefully take this uh, clip, give it a good old yank, make sure it's tight, put that cap back on. The only thing really left to do is to um, get the trans hot and check the fluid. And once again, I kind of want to make a point about this fluid. What we have here is we have two holes in this dipstick and there's a cross hatch area in between it. Can you see it? The little cross hatchings in there? I don't know if you can. What we're trying to do is our goal is, is that when this transmission is hot, we want it to be in between these two holes right here. So really what that means is we're going to be letting this transmission run for a while and get hot. Then we'll just come back and check the fluid. And I guess I've been saying that with the zoom on the whole time. So pretend I just said all that, but I was talking to you. It could take a good 15, 20 minutes to get this thing, you know, up to operating temperature. Because we're not really driving it, we're just kind of like letting it sit here. All right, so this transmission fluid is good and hot. Let's go ahead and check it. We're right, right here at the base of the stick, so I'm pretty safe to put a whole nother quart in this thing. Now it's gonna take some time for that fluid to work its way down to the pan, so we'll just let it hang out, run for a little bit, and then we'll come back and check it again. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but right where my dirty ass fingernail is, is where the fluid level comes up to. We're inside the hash marks. And usually what they say is, if you're inside that hash mark, don't add any more to it. Well, we're pretty much done with the service. The only thing I have left to do here is kind of clean up the mess I made when um, we had that little blunder at the beginning, <laughs> beginning of the flush. So I'm gonna get this shit cleaned up, then we're gonna wrap this thing up. All right, so let's figure out what this would have costed. See, the part about this that sucks is there's a couple different ways you could go about doing it. Uh, for instance, I bought that fitting from Summit, and I didn't even end up using it. And, you know, not many people are going to have an extra cooler line laying around that they can use for, uh, you know, an, uh, an adapter, I guess, into the upper line at the radiator. But the way I had originally planned this was to have eight bucks for the fitting, some 3 8 inch uh, hose, a couple clamps, can of brake clean. Now for the fluid, again I went with AMS oil. It's just that deal again where you had to be a preferred customer to get it at roughly $9 a quart and then some shipping was involved too. But when it was all said and done at the end of the day, it ended up costing 160 bucks for all the fluid that we needed. Just went back through this. It ended up taking 17 quarts. Let's just go over this math right quick. 18.97 for the filter. I'm just going to say 160 for all the fluid. Yeah, I know it's a lot, whatever. $8 for the fitting, $6 for the 3 8 hose, a buck for some clamps, $5 for some brake clean. And we're just going to assume that you have, you know, like a funnel and a bucket already. That brought our grand total up to 198.97. So we're going to go 198.97. So, let's just do a total real quick since like I said in the last video, these uh, numbers kind of got fucked up somewhere in the process. So plus 42, 1694, 1078, 3204, 4496, fuck, 0.96. See, that's how shit gets fucked up. 51 point 62 shit i think i have to add so that would be 43 10 plus plus 10 so that'd be 64 65 i guess i gotta recheck that shit well we got a number 50506 so excluding any normal tools which would be pretty much you know everything you saw in basic automotive tools that every do-it-yourselfer should have um we were in this thing for a little bit over 500 bucks and that is fucking awesome now we're kind of looking ahead here and just looking to see what else we've uh 
got going on. Uh, lubricate chassis, that's something we still have to do. Not part of the 100,000 mile service. And it looks like the only other thing would be checking the belts and the engine cooling system service. So it's five years or 150,000 miles. We're kind of far away from 150, however, we don't know if this coolant's ever been changed. So not gonna do that anytime soon, but we got a mental note of that. The fuel pumps tend to last about 120,000 miles and we're right in that ballpark range. So not gonna be anytime soon, but we are putting a fuel pump in this thing for preventative maintenance, so. Yeah. So how about that, huh? Doing the whole transmission service for 200 bucks or 198 and some change or whatever it was. That's pretty awesome. I'm going to tell you why. Normally just the transmission flush by itself, which uses, um, I believe it's 14 quarts of fluid that they put into a machine. What they do is they'll, they'll tie it into that cooler. So one part of the machine will go into the radiator fitting. The other part of the machine will tie right into that line that we popped off. And the machine will act as a, I don't know what you want to call it, a, a thing. So when you start the truck up and fluid comes out of that fitting at the radiator, it goes into the machine. At the same time, the machine pumps fluid into the line. So it's almost like it gets installed, the machine gets hooked up in series with the transmission. And I've seen it myself. I've seen some of the most horrendous transmissions with just terrible fluid. That machine got every last bit of the garbage out of it. The part I didn't agree with with the machine was, first you'd have to put in a little bit of a, a solvent that breaks down grime or whatever the fuck it does. You know what I mean? And then after you did the flush when you were done, you had to put in some kind of a additive. It was like um, stop slip or something like that, which most manufacturers don't recommend you putting anything but transmission fluid into the transmission. Just the fact that we were able to do this this whole shebangy for the cost of just the flush. I mean, I'm, I, I'm fucking psyched up about it. We did this up on the lift. I didn't say at the beginning because I got tired of repeating myself, but just for you guys at home, this is completely doable in the driveway. I can't tell you how many transmissions I've serviced over the years in the driveway. So yeah, I'm really excited that we're done on this. I'm really excited about the price. I use my software that I use here at my shop to get a rough number. The hard part about doing that was it only lets you pick out OEM prices. So that's, that's kind of the variable. Really what I'm focused on is how much do we save in labor, you know, if we were taking it to a shop and having them go through it. So really what it's going to be is I'm going to have to get some numbers from some other shops. Same deal as before, I'll call a couple dealers. I'll call a couple independent shops. I'll even use my own software to give us some real numbers. Now, we've done everything for the 100,000 mile service in here, but like I kind of touched down on a little bit ago, there is some other stuff I kind of want to do since this truck is you know, pretty much new to me, even though we've had it for, it'll be a year before you know it. I've never checked the brakes on it and I didn't really grease it up. In an upcoming video, we're gonna do the brake check, we're gonna check the belts on this thing, and we're gonna do the grease job. I don't know if that's it, I don't know if I'm gonna put the um, 100,000 mile price wrap up at the end of this or just make another video. If I do put it on another video, well, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching, subscribe to the shit, all that.